In this video, I'd like to talk about the idea of unit fraction exponents. And before we look at any of the example problems, essentially what I want to show you is that these unit fractions are another way of writing roots of numbers. So we've seen with exponents before that, let's say we have the number nine and we square it. So a positive exponent is just repeated multiplication. And we've also seen that if we have a negative exponent, that this is just repeated division. We would divide by nine twice here and you'd get one over 81. So the question remains, what happens if we have a fractional exponent? And what I wanna show you is that these fractional exponents are just the roots that we can take of a number. So in this case, we would be taking the second root or the square root of nine, which we know is three. But to make sense of this, you could start with the fact that three squared is equal to nine. And if I raise both sides of this equation to the one half power, then here I have an exponent to an exponent. And remember that rule that, let's say you have two, to the third and you raise it to the second power, that an exponent to an exponent, we just multiply. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna multiply these numbers and two times a half, let me do that here. We can put this over one and we're just multiplying fractions. So we go straight across, you get two over two, which is one. So this just becomes three to the first power equals nine to the one half power. But we also know that the square root of nine is equal to three as well. So if they're both equal to three, then they must be equal to each other. So this nine to the one half power is the square root of nine. And likewise, you can make the same argument for say something raised to the one third power, this would be the cubed root of eight. And for this to be proven true, we could say maybe that two to the third is equal to eight. And from here, we can raise everything to the one third power. And we get that two to the third to the one third, three times a third at exponent to an exponent, we multiply. This would just be one. And so this just becomes two is equal to eight to the one third. But we also know that the cubed root of eight is equal to two. And since these are both equal to two, then they must be equal to each other. So you can make this, like I said, this argument for any type of root you wanna take. But basically, let me scroll down a bit. We can generalize this and say that any number we have to the one over n power is equal to the nth root of whatever that number is. So for instance, Let's look at a specific example. If we had seven to the one ninth power, this would just be the ninth root of seven. So the denominator of our exponent here just tells us what root we're gonna be taking of this base, this number here. And in the next video, we'll talk about what happens if the numerator is a different number, but the numerator is whatever power you're raising the number to. So the numerator of your fractional exponent is the power you're raising it to, like it could be negative two or positive two, like our first two examples. And the denominator is just the root of this number. So in this case, the ninth root. So with that in mind, with this general formula here, we have a different way of expressing the roots of numbers as fractional exponents. And if we go up to our question now, we have c to the one half power. But like I mentioned, the denominator of our fractional exponent, that is the root that we're taking. So we're taking a second root of c, or just a square root. We don't usually write the two here for square roots or second roots, but this would be choice letter a. And we could look at the other ones just to clarify and make sure for instance, this one is one over the square root of c squared. And remember that square roots and squares are inverse operations, they cancel each other out. And so this would just be one over c 
or c to the minus 1 power, since we're dividing by c one time. This one here, we could rewrite the denominator as c to the 1 half, but we're dividing by this, and so we could change it to c to the minus 1 half power. And in this one, we're taking the half root of c, which we could rewrite as a fractional exponent, since whatever root we're taking is just the denominator of our exponent. So we'd have 1 divided by 1 half in the denominator, but this is just equal to c squared, since 1 divided by half is the same thing as 1 multiplied by this number flipped over by its reciprocal, and that would just be 1 times 2 over 1, which is 2. So even though this looks complicated, this is actually just c squared. But for ours, for this problem, we were just looking at c to the 1 half power, which meant the second root or the square root of c. So let's do some different examples now just to make sure that we fully understand this. So this one we have t to the 1 third power. So let me rewrite that. And as we know from above, the denominator of our fractional exponent determines what root we're taking of the number. And since the denominator is a 3, we're going to be taking a third root of t. And you can see that's choice letter d here. So you could also go through and analyze the properties of the other ones, but honestly, once you figure this out, you can just move on from there. But a way to check your work is to look at each of these and prove to yourself that it is not equal to t to the one-third. So let's keep going. Now this one, we're giving it, we're given the problem as a root already, so it's essentially in reverse. But we're taking a fourth root of x, and remember the general formula that if you have some number a raised to the 1 over n power, that this is just the nth root of that number. And in our case, well, instead of a, we have x, and instead of an n here, we have a 4 here. So this we could rewrite as x to the 1 fourth power. And you could think about it in reverse because the denominator of your fractional exponent just tells you what root you're taking of that number. So x to the 1 fourth is right here, choice D. And again, if you want to double check this, just go through A, B, and C and prove to yourself that they're not equal to the fourth root of x.